Broadcasting live from the Jersey Shore, it's Coach Kev on the Damage 365 Radio Network. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Damage 365 Radio. This is episode number 14 in our annual East Over show. Happy Easter and happy Passover to everybody out there celebrating. Uh, sorry, last week we weren't able to bring you a show. Just so many things would not come together uh, that prevented us from having the show. But, you know, like a bad rash, we are back. And I am back with... Two co-hosts, two co-hosts, not just one, but two. Speaking about bad rash, Nick the Beard is back. <laughs> oh, that's a good one, Kev. It's not a bad rash. It's a shorter beard. It's a, it's a segue into the uh, the beard conversation, and then we have someone that is going to make this male duo better looking because she is our resident hillbilly from down south. Former women's <laughs> champion Paris Kelly joins us. Paris, welcome to the show. Thank you, thank you. I'm pretty excited. <laughs> We're excited because it makes us sound better and look better. And you know, what's better than the looking better on the radio? You know, yeah. The voice. Well, obviously, they call me a hillbilly. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was better than the, the hick or the moonshiner or anything else. So, <laughs> but. <laughs> I swear, people, she has all her teeth. I am not kidding. Uh, go watch yes, her. Go, go, go look at her on Facebook and uh, yes. and watch her matches. Don't worry. Yes, she's she's got all her teeth. Uh, I don't. I can't say much about her opponents after she's done with them. They might be missing a couple of teeth, but that's okay. Yeah. That's <laughs> that's true. Ah, oh, so I I feel like it's been one week away, and I feel like it's been like a, a, a forever. Um, we have no birthdays today. Uh, we will have three commercial breaks during the show to give props to our sponsors, and also I'd like to uh, give kudos and an official, very very official welcome back uh, as one of our sponsors, Esposito's Pizza and Pasta of Matawan, New Jersey, and Manasquan, New Jersey for officially uh, re-signing with us for another year. So uh, welcome back, Jimmy Esposito's and the Esposito's Pizza and Pasta family. Uh, we will have uh, their first commercial that we've been playing in the last year, and uh, we are in the process of making a brand new one minute long uh, promo for them that include both their restaurants and their uh, new brand new award that they just won down in Las Vegas for the pizza competition where their sesame seed crust pizza finished number one. That's right, we'll have the number one pizza and pasta restaurant at the Las Vegas Pizza Open as our sponsor. So, what a, what a duo, I, I love it, you know? <laughs> Who doesn't love pizza? <laughs> uh, okay. I love it. Uh, so, Going back to excuses to uh, to eat pizza and junk food, last week was WrestleMania, and it saw a lot of um, confusion amongst the internet wrestling community of things that didn't expect to happen, storylines that just didn't make any sense, storylines that were broken um, after months and months of building up to WrestleMania. So uh, I'm going to get my... my first feedback from Nick uh, and then we'll we'll shoot over to Paris um, one match in particular Nick Bray Wyatt versus The Undertaker after months and months of building Bray Wyatt up as the face of fear do you feel it made any sense to have The Undertaker come back beat Bray Wyatt and you know it didn't make any sense it didn't make any sense to me it didn't make any sense to you I thought it was a lose-lose situation for everybody. Um, if The Undertaker loses that match, it's two straight losses at WrestleMania. I don't know for me, but possibly it could tarnish a, tarnish his legacy at WrestleMania. If Bray loses, he loses more steam. That's two straight WrestleMania losses for Bray Wyatt. Yep. 
he needs to he he needs to get some momentum going. And maybe they're building him down a little bit to go and win Money in the Bank in July. That could be a possibility, and I would love to see him win Money in the Bank because I think that's something he needs right now. However, I, I was very confused a little bit with with how the match turned out, but it also could happen to be because of the pop, the injury that supposedly happened earlier in the day. Right. And for those who didn't hear about it, which I don't know how you didn't, <laughs> Bray tweaked his ankle during warm-ups at like 10 a.m. or Eastern time or whatever time it was and could barely walk, so... Yeah, um, you know, unless they lived under a rock um, and don't get uh, cable under that rock, maybe like Patrick Starfish. Um, yeah, he, he, he hurt himself, but I, I mean, I didn't really see much of uh, anything in the in the match that would say that he's hurt. But I do got to give kudos to the Undertaker. Phenomenal shape. I mean, ten times he, better he looked, shape than last year. He looked so good compared to last year, and after the match. Uh, we saw pictures of him backstage and a lot of people were talking. He said he felt great backstage as well after the match. So, I mean, that's good for fans. That's good for him. And hopefully we will get to see him one last time in Texas next year. I mean, it's possible. I do not want to see The Undertaker versus Sting. So, we won't, you know, let's not even jump no, on, me neither. on that bandwagon. I don't want to see a 130-year-old com- com- combined age of men wrestling in the <laughs> ring. I mean, it's just like, give me a break. Um... Paris, let's go to you. We'll, we'll, um, we're going to go to the Divas match, the uh, the tag team match. We spoke a little bit before we went on the air that you you actually enjoyed that match. Uh, give us a little insight what you liked about it. You know, I liked it because of it being like a tag match. And also, it just had me on my feet. I don't know. I guess it's because I have watched Paige from the time that she was in NXT to now. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, I love Paige. I don't know why, like I said, because a lot of people really don't like her. But it just it had me on my feet, and I was just like, oh, my gosh, what's going to happen next? Oh, man, you know, it's just, I don't know. I, I know a lot of people did not like the match, like uh, both of you guys. But. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't say I didn't like the match. I said it could have been booked better because yes. there are four women. Those are four of the women in on the main roster who actually can wrestle better than the rest of the main roster, uh, female main roster as well. So I just would have liked it to been booked a little bit better. A little longer, you know. These these six minutes, I mean, granted six minutes is better than three minutes, which is usually what they get on Monday Night Raw. But yeah. Yeah. It's, I mean, look, do you want female wrestling? Do you want female entertainment? Or do you want to promote this Divas, uh, Total Divas show and drag all that nonsense into the ring from the show and translate it into somewhat wrestling. This is what they need to decide because AJ Lee just announced her retirement we, uh, less than uh, 48 hours ago. And if you, do, you think for a minute that AJ Lee is not totally, absolutely aggravated and frustrated with the direction of women's wrestling in the WWE and that didn't account for one of the main reasons why he retired, she retired, then you're nuts. Because yeah. she was just wasting away her talent, you know, continuously with these dumb storylines, losing to Nikki, which AJ Lee is too talented to be losing to Nikki, who's not even the better of the Bellas when it comes to being in yeah. the ring. And, you know, you're tagging up with Paige. So now you're taking two of the best technical wrestlers and you're putting them on the same team. So they're not, they're not even take, fighting each other. And that, Paris, that's why I wasn't crazy about the match. And the fact that the title wasn't on the line. How do you have a WrestleMania, the mecca of, of pay-per-views, and you don't have every title on the line? Yep. And you didn't even have a title match on Raw either. So it, it diminishes the point of the, uh, of the Dima, uh, Divas uh, title. Mm-hmm. And then they, then you hear rumors about them possibly bringing in a Diva Tag Team title, which makes less than zero yeah. sense in my mind. Yeah, and then you know who's who's going to wind up with with you know the Divas? It's going to be like Bella and Bailey. I mean, uh, not uh, B- Bailey and uh, Emma. You know that's. <laughs> I mean, hey, don't 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 uh, diss my girl Bailey. I, I love like both her. of them. I love both. I of them. do yeah. not like her. Who? Which one don't you like? See. Emma, she annoys me in the stupid dance. Well, I like, think she's oh. done with that. I think that I think that's done. 
Um, I think she took a little bit of a heel turn from um, from the little some of the video I saw, um, and then she had a little uh, kind of backstage conversation with Bailey at an NXT show about you know stop trying to be you know Mrs. Nice Girl and hugging everybody because what did it get me? She goes, it got me back on NXT. So I think they're trying to give her a little bit of a uh, mean streak. Which you know maybe she's right. maybe she's the next one that steps up and and you know and takes over for AJ Lee's spot as you know one of one of the in ring technicians. But you know Bailey can wrestle, uh, Emma can wrestle. They need to get them. They need to get Charlotte. They need to get Charlotte in WWE. And you, no, there's one person. There's Charlotte. I think is the best female wrestler down there. But there's another person. You, you need Sasha Banks up on that main oh, roster. That girl can go. Gee, that girl can it's go. Terrible. And she also has the attitude and the personality yeah. to work as a gimmick on the main roster. I, I agree. She's got the attitude and she can work. But I, I don't. I. I'm not a fan of her. That's that, that's that's my girl down in NXT. I don't, I'm not a fan. I saw her fight Charlotte. When she uh, when Charlotte, um, you know, cashed in her rematch clause, and I yep. was not impressed with that match at all. Really, not at all. I hmm. thought she botched numerous spots, numerous. Well, I definitely think, and they're, they're, in my mind, a female talent on NXT is better than the female talent on the main roster. I agree. Oh, definitely. I I, I agree with that. Um, let's move on to uh, more divas. Uh, Paris, did you see the John Cena match? The John Cena versus Rusev. Yes. Now, again, did that make any sense? Building Rusev up as this ultimate villain, this anti-American, this this great storyline, undefeated. And you just have John Cena come in and squash it. No, it did not. <laughs> I, I'm not really a John Cena fan, so yeah, I'm all against him. <laughs> but did, did it, does it make any sense to you that that would have made more sense if Rusev wins that match? Definitely. I mean, I would think so. I mean, wouldn't you? I, I yeah, absolutely. Um, Again, months and months of building this match up. Uh, you've been building Rusev up for over a year now. Uh, fans were going crazy, thinking he was going to win the uh, the Royal Rumble, you know, and and then you come and have you and you get him squashed by Cena, which is again the second year in a row that Cena has destroyed a storyline. Last year it was Bray Wyatt. You know, this year yeah. now it's Rusev. It's just like look. I understand John Cena is the face of the franchise. I understand he's he's the poster boy for WWE and and the Make a Wish Foundation and everything which is good about what they do. And I respect the guy a thousand percent for his work ethic and everything he does and the fact that he doesn't take any days off. And but you don't need to keep rewarding this guy with every single title opportunity that comes awry. And it's just like, if John Cena doesn't have a title, you know someone's losing a title soon because it's like John Cena can't exist without a title. Yeah. It, yeah. In my mind... Gonna make the... what... Yeah, Paris. Oh, I was just going to say, I mean, they're just going to end up getting the fans so bored with wrestling, and that's what's wrong with it. Yep. What were you going to say, Nick? I was going to say that... The... The whole point of behind playing devil's advocate in a sense, the whole point behind Cena winning the title in my mind was to push the mid card titles up, and that's why you had Cena and Daniel Bryan win because you were going to have Brock Lesnar as the champion off on the sidelines, like he has been for the past couple months. Right. Then you have your IC title and your US title headline pay per views, and I was okay with that. But then we see Seth cash in right. at the end of the night. Which don't get me wrong, I absolutely loved, but in my mind, it defeated the purpose of John Cena winning the title. 